Hello everyone, this is Marmar. Uh, so on today's episode of Stargazer Cafe, we are not going to be discussing One Division because that show is over. Uh, so instead, we are going to be uh, what uh, talking about Falcon and the Captain Soldier. I isn't that right, Sparta? Mm, yep. Yes, that's that's the show. Uh, so uh, this this uh, series is starting off a bit uh, more fast paced than One Division, isn't it? It's three episodes less than One Division. By the looks of it, and they're already getting such a plot or finalized by the beginning, unlike one division, which took like three episodes to actually get to the plot. Uh, well, I I think the plot started in episode one personally, and one. No, division. that's that's set up. That that's where they just put like think that's where they're, they're just putting idea of what's going on in the show, and that and the main plot didn't show up to like what episode three mm. of like what you know is going on. Mm, one no. and and then uh. In the Falcon Winter Soldier, they pretty much throw out the idea of like, oh, there's a new cap going around. They don't know who it is. And uh, this weird group of mercenaries going around, basically causing terror across the nation. Well, we don't, we do know who the uh, new Captain America is. He's Young Walker, US agent. He's, uh. Well, we do, but no one else does. Well, uh, all right. I was. They know by name, but they know him by name. But like, like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Right. Uh, what? Uh, why did Why did the government all of a sudden decide to make him Captain America? Yeah. Well. Well, there was a, b a bit of a tease in the credit scene about uh, his possible origins. Uh, but uh, like one vision, this could just be misleading. Uh, since there was a Reaper helmet in one of the intro scenes, but that led to well, nowhere. the thing is that was never like a um Easter egg or anything. That was, that was just an Easter egg, precise, and there wasn't like a lead away anyway. Yeah, but most people tend to like take things seriously and try to use it as a fact of like, oh, this is gonna happen, despite it probably most likely never gonna happen. I mean, like people got like up, like people start going up in arms on the Ultron. Theory, but it honestly never happened because, well, that just that just makes that would make the show worse by just adding Ultron for no reason. Yes, I guess you're right on that one. Uh, but uh, there's a thing which happened this episode that I found pretty interesting. Uh, and that was of course the credit scene. Uh, it has a few Easter eggs, more more than the uh, rest of the show. Well, uh, you know Bucky's uh, notepad, right? Yeah. It had a few names, uh, some of which I think are Easter eggs. Uh, that won't really lead to something important. But just for example, there was a Marvel writer, but there was a few other characters in there. Like uh, Helmut Simo, for example, which we know he's going to appear, but there was a few others. Like, there was a guy who had a gulag in Russia. Uh, of course, the senator who he arrested. Uh, well, yeah, those are people from his past who either manipulated him or helped gain the power. Yeah. Well, Zemo makes sense since he was pretty much the main reason why he was a wanted criminal at the start and all that. Well, there's a few other things which I found a bit interesting, like, uh, of course, there was this one uh, easter egg, uh, there's this one Marvel villain who is related to US Agent, of course, and uh, a few other villains who kind of replicated their skin's formula. Uh, but I don't think he will appear, so I'm not really going to mention his name. Yeah, people can I mean, just no, honestly, because like the main focus of it is like these this weird group of people, like super soldiers, weird for reason coming around, like the Flag Smashers. Their main leader is supposedly a augmented human, assuming based off Captain America or the other Winter Soldiers. Any of them actually survived? Yeah, probably. Uh, but it, you know what else it could be? You know that one show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., who no one cared about? 
Is the nine kids are not canonical anymore, so it matters. Well, we don't know if it's not canonical. It's canonical. We don't know really. Like I mean, they brought in humans, and none of those versions of humans were ever used at all. Despite yeah. Despite the fact that they were they were the one that brought in, the, but they decided, you know what? We're gonna retcon that and make our own show, which is no longer canon either. I mean, there's there's a few bits and pieces that could be canon, like centipede. That thing no one remembers from that show, or like, um, of course, uh, Graviton, he was there, uh, but you know, uh, all the in Captain America, the first one, uh, the first Avenger, there's a bit in which they take some blood of Steve Rogers to replicate the serum, so that could be that could be implemented, you know. Uh, plus, we know that in What If, like, there's going to be Captain America stuff, so, you know, it could happen that this gets explained in further detail. Uh, what do you think? I'm not really sure. I'm, this is the first episode, not much I can say about it. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on anything or make theory, because honestly, making theories about a show that's literally just episode one is literally pointless. It, just gonna set yourself set, set yourself up for disaster, making a crock pot theory, and getting upset because your theory, based on basically nothing, isn't proven. Get mad at the show because what you think isn't right is right isn't right at all. Yes, uh, but I I I just find it fun so, to need to be theorize. Nah, kind of pointless because like it was taking literally everything to try and make it a point into the show just to justify like random stuff. And sometimes shows as things to just save adding them. Yes, uh, well, and this is going to be really a short episode because it's the first episode. There's not much going on about. Uh, I would say that the character dynamics and relations, I say, are better off in this show than they are with One Division, which is primarily supposed to be based on character development and all that, but I feel like this show is doing way better than One Division did. I don't know. I I like the way they are handling some stuff. I mean, like they're handling like a character's mental health better than One Division did. Uh, yeah, but they're actually, uh, showing, they're, actually, they're actually showing like Winter Soldier's like dilemma and how he feels about the entire situation, rather than just like you know this like sh- telling us basically. Yeah, but uh, One Division got uh, delayed and. They f- f- couldn't like so did this show. find it. So did yeah, this show. no, this show that's, was... not re- that's, that's not really an excuse though. This show was way more delayed than One Division. Thing so... is though, that's not an excuse. And no. this show is only three episodes shorter than One Division, and no. that show has more time to set things up. No, what I'm saying is that like this show had a bit more time to be worked on, because this was supposed to release before One Division. So my theory is that they rush Wonder Vision more than D show, and so that's. Let me give an excuse for it. Mm, I don't know. I personally am liking Wonder Vision more than uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, even if it ended already. Uh, but uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier is just starting, so it could go in an entirely different direction, and end up flopping. I mean, the main reason, like, one division that many flops are because they pretty much drastically changed what it's already about very quickly. Like, the entire premise of the show changed very drastically. Yes. I feel like, like, it was from, like, a, like, a uh, character-focused show to, like, all of a sudden a, oh, vil- who's this villain all of a sudden com- fighting fight fight show. I don't know. I feel like one division has no villain. That's what they should have stuck with, but they decided to do that for some reason. No, I know. We have different opinions on one division. Like no, they they added a villain for no reason. That's a, that's the main thing about one division. They added in a villain for whatever no, reason. No, the villain is Wanda's grief. Agatha is just there to take advantage of something that's happening. Which is a villain which a villain does. No, that's not what a villain does. Takes advantage of the person takes her advantage of the main character for her own benefits. 
I mean, she said one that was going to destroy the world, so... Kinda gray, not... Very not... gray. You know how Agatha is with her power, like... I think what she did with her power is when she saw it from originally. I'm really justifying, like, her actions, honestly. I don't know. If she actually did want to actually help, she would have done it in a different manner, not just, like, like emotionally, like, torture her and just put a lot of people she cares about in danger just for the sake of, quote-unquote, helping. I don't know. In the comics, she's a great character, so she, I'm, I'm expecting her to be great here. I, I don't see doubt it. I don't know. Same as how much she, same as how much she honestly dislikes Awanda. Well, uh, Wanda is not much of a good character, is she? Just kidding, she is. True. Wanda. Better than Captain Marvel. Mm, uh, I'll give you that, but uh, but uh, this show so far, I, I really like the character interactions between Falcon and his sister. I mean, yeah, because before all this, he had a normal life and normal everything. He wasn't like a war torn uh, orphan who was just lost, who was pretty much, pretty much lost by everyone she was ever loved. Someone from the past, a genius playboy or anything like that. He's one of the very few actual civilians with an actual life prior to any of this. Yeah. Like, he's more recent out of everyone. He had a big decision to leave his usual life behind just to get to become a superhero, basically. Yes. Uh, well. This episode was great, in my opinion, just for one thing. Want to know what that one thing is? That's what? They introduced Joaquin Torres. Uh, he's Falcon in the comics uh, for for a while. He's Mexican. Uh, he's a superhero. So uh, mm -hmm. it's the first uh, Mexican superhero in Marvel. Uh, the movies, I mean. Because, uh, well, we haven't seen any other Mexican superheroes in the movies and the TV shows and the shows and the movies. So, he's kind of cool. I don't honestly care about him. They gave him nothing besides him being like the awkward jokester with Falcon because he was technically a superhero. I don't know. But, uh, well, I, I, find, I, I think he's going to become Falcon. Because he becomes Falcon in the comics right after Falcon becomes Captain America, so, uh, you know, they are they they I think they are going to go with the route that uh, this new Captain America will end up becoming U.S. agent, Falcon will end up becoming uh, uh what's his name of the normal Falcon Sam Wilson okay. that. He's going to become Captain America. Bucky is just going to be Bucky. Uh, and Joaquin is going to obviously become a uh, Falcon. Look, I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Marvel is really pushing Falcon to be Captain America. Yes. More than they are uh, Bucky. So honestly, it's more likely, yeah, Falcon uh, uh, Captain America. Besides, more than anything. Bucky is a war like, criminal. We all know they're they're pushing the uh, decision portion of, like, Oh, who's going to become the new Captain America? Is it going to be him or him? We all know it's going to be We all know it's going to be Falcon. Uh, Bucky has been going through a lot of stuff in his life. And like... I and yeah, he even said, doesn't feel right for someone like him to be Captain America with all the stuff he's done. Yeah, and he's... feel like someone who actually should take up the mantle. And he's mentally unstable right now, so... I mean, hey, it points on him for going, actually going to a therapist. Yes. Oh, like Wanda. I I think Wanda didn't even have time to consider going to a therapist because uh as we saw she exploded and So did Bucky. When did he explode? Well he turned to dust, he took five years afterwards and he came when he came back straight to therapy. Alright. Oh, uh well I I I guess um I guess Wanda was just more concerned with making sure Vision got respect. I mean, theoretically, Bucky had more problems than Wanda did, seeing how much stuff he caused throughout the years. True, but... 
I don't know. Honestly, it, it just seems weird that the 100-year-old man with so much mental problems and killed a lot of people cares more about his mental health than parents than Wana did. I don't know. I feel like the way they are treated, it's it's a bit of a way to show the difference in the character of both. Like, Wanda, of course, has chaos magic, so she's going to be way more unstable, despite uh, probably not having as much trauma as Bucky. Be well, because, uh, well, she she's chaos magic, like, literally... In the comic, she's given powers by the god of chaos himself, so I I think it makes a bit of sense that, like, she's uh, more unstable, if you know what I'm saying. You do understand. But it hasn't shown that, it hasn't shown that magic has that magic has an effect on her, honestly. Mm, I don't know. But, um, it's just a theory I have in my mind. And I, I think Bucky... D Are you sure Bucky went to therapy himself? Seems like it. I don't know, he seemed kind of forced to go to therapy to me. Like... I mean, the thing is though, he doesn't enjoy it, but he has something he needs to do since he's been, all this has been happening. Yes. Like, how many people actually enjoy the idea of going to therapy? Not a lot, but most people tend to do it just for themselves. Because I think I have to like it. Mm, I feel like you can enjoy therapy if, like, you know it's necessary for you. Yeah, but I think most people have to enjoy it. Yeah. Mm, it just seemed a bit forced, like, the government had uh, sent him there to, like, help him with his problems more or less than... I guess that's kind, of, that's kind of the point, because, like... He's kind of being forced to change, and he's not adjusting to how well. Kind of like the scene where he arrests that senator lady. He's kind of like, it, it, kind of, it kind of adds into him being like, adding a little forced in line has him having to say these lines to let him know, oh, he's a changed person, and he goes by this. That's just kind of the point. Yes, and, and his little smile showed it. It's like... He wanted to murder, but she, he couldn't because the smile. I guess he. No, it's more like the fact that he knows it's a. This is a good thing, but it doesn't feel like this is his way of doing it. Probably, yes. but he's going along with it. It it feels like if you if you try to make the Punisher be a good person. Like, I feel like he wanted to murder that senator. Honestly. I did. Yes. I mean, he probably broke that man's hand. Since he used his metal fist. Uh, but, uh... Th yeah, this episode was a bit lackluster in the lore perspective. Uh, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it a lot, honestly. I've, I I kind of zoned off a bit in this episode and had to watch it twice, uh, particularly in the action scenes. I'm kind of sad that, like, they made Red Wing a, a robot. I like... I mean, they kind of had to. I am, I am of the same opinion. How most people feel like an actual bird started coming out of nowhere just to fight villains? I would be in for Most that. Most people wouldn't enjoy that if an actual bird was coming around with the rest being shot. The bird has to have a gun. Just just trap, strap a gun to the bird. I'm sure that will work. Like, I, I am on the same opinion as, like, the actor that portrays Sam Wilson. That, like, he needs to have the bird... He needs to have the red and white expandex, and and he needs to shoot wings. That's all I want. You know? Tell that customer, tell that customer money to actually have, and then actually do. I I I I want them to redcon it in some way. Like I just want him to fall in a pit of like goop that has bird DNA and radiation and to be 
the comic Falcon. That's that's all I want. That sounds very like an awesome idea. No, it's a, it's a great idea. Trust me. It will look amazing. It will be a great scene. Every everyone will love it. You just you, you just have to give me a a, a budget of like. Five billion dollars, and I will make the uh, the Falcon movie that everyone will love. And uh, and uh, I'll bring villains in a way that people will will say, "Wow, this is epic." We should let Mar make more movies, you know. So, uh, are you excited for the next episode? I am. I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, me too. I I think it will be... I don't think it will be a, as good of a series as WandaVision, but I'm definitely enjoying it. I mean, WandaVision's ending was crap. So the ending better. was crap, but the rest of the series was great. I... Seems like it's going to better... Seems like it's getting into a better uh, structure than WandaVision is, which is honestly a good thing. I don't think it's it's uh it's going to be a better structure than WandaVision. I I, wow. I personally don't think it's it's going to be as good as WandaVision overall. I think it will probably end better considering it was delayed more than WandaVision. Uh and that's it. Then shouldn't then shouldn't that go like give it more props if the show is delayed a lot more than if you're actually putting it actually is getting more effort put in than a show that has less delays and more episodes than a show which has been delayed a lot more has less episodes. Seems like it's giving more props, honestly. Mm, I am giving a lot of props to this show because the the, uh, the visual effects look really good. Uh, but I just enjoy the uh, sitcom aspect of WandaVision more along with the uh, fidelity to like all of those sitcoms of those eras like watching the behind the scenes of WandaVision I I don't think Falcon and the Winter Soldier will top WandaVision for me just knowing how much effort and like the fidelity to the eras and everything that went into WandaVision to make it so retro and vintage, you know? At least that's my opinion. Not, not really. I I like nostalgia. I mean, I don't think you carried that most of the sh show, honestly. I really like the yeah, sitcom episodes, but, um... I think uh, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, will be a, a great episode, a, a series of the MCU. I think it won't be as significant compared to WandaVision, mostly because WandaVision is... I mean, even then, that's what I don't think. I don't know. I, I don't see... But the most significant that WandaVision gave was Return of Vision. I want this um superhero name. That's all they gave out. No, the most significant thing One Division did was Agatha's introduction, Short's introduction. Um, Agatha is on the background until she's needed later. So her yes. introduction is worthless. She's going to be needed later, and that's why she's later. She's like a toy you put on the shelf because it's for later. So her introduction is not even honestly worth it. It's not even that important to the show. She's probably going to show up once in a she, movie and put back later and never be mentioned again. Like uh, the leader. She will be mentioned way more. The leader wasn't even mentioned at all. Yeah, if it's going to be important, the leader was going to be super important. Why? It's it's just a green guy with a gr big brain. I mean, that's the focal point against the Hulk. One's a strong and powerful, one, one's a super genius. Kind of like, the bear the opposites that make them villains. I don't know. I I'm not the, uh, as knowledgeable in the Hulk mythos as I am of like. I mean, like, like I said, unlike WandaVision, at least this one has the main point of 
who's going to be the next Captain America and all that. That's like a very important like think uh, structure for like for MCU in general. Seeing how he's like one of the main symbols and leaders of like of the team. He's and the having leader him of around it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna have like a big impact on the future nearby where in one division. We got we got the vision. We got the vision bag, that's it. No, we got that's, Agatha, that's, that's the... we got the chaos magic, we got a lot of magic. Chaos stuff. magic means nothing on the grand scheme of things. Agatha is basically pointless right now since he's literally in her we're back to her hex form. So really, saying Agatha is a point is like me saying Captain America's uh, um, some Avengers suit played a significant part because he used it in Endgame. You know what? I kind of don't like Captain America suits besides like you know the suit he wore during the scenes where he was with the ladies and danced and punched Hitler? I I really like that suit more. Like the well, that's because things. you like things are terrible. It wasn't terrible. It was comic book. It, that was literally the point. It was supposed to be a terrible looking suit. It wasn't terrible. It was literally a cloth suit with a little hat on him. That's literally what it was. It was it was good. I I liked it more. And like I said before, you like horrible things. You like Cap, you like Miss Captain Marvel. I mean, she's hot, so shut up. And a terrible character. No. She's a terrible character. No. She's a terrible character. She has no personality. Well, anyway, I I think this is it for today's episode. Don't you agree? Since it's not, um, there's not much to talk about, is there? We could, but there's one thing I could mention, seeing as how, you don't tend to care about it, but this does go on the point of it, seeing as this is a multi-franchise series. Yes, uh, so mention it. I would like to go over the Snare Cut Justice League, which I saw recently, and oh boy, it actually was a good movie. Was it? I haven't seen it. Well, it's a four-hour-long movie, but it actually was a good movie, and it's playing very well, honestly. Better than Joss Sweden's movie, honestly, since it just has a very flow and consistent, like, uh, thematic structure to it. It has Jesus Joker, and he oh, says, he come towards the end, and he says, in the end, he's most society. That doesn't come up. Doesn't come up in the movie. Jesus Joker. Like, all that was supposed to be a setup for the next Justice League movie, which they canned when they pretty much went to John Sweden's Avengers of the Avengers, and Avengers of Justice League. Because honestly, the version they were teasing up in the movie seems actually pretty good. Rather than just everything going back. When just we everything goes back to being good, PG King, uh, everything ends up being good. While Zack Snyder is like, it's up in the air what will happen. They solved the problem, but what will happen in the future? They don't know. To be honest, I didn't watch the original uh, Justice League, and I haven't watched the Snyder cut. I like yeah, Shazam. It's a better movie, honestly. Better movie, honestly. Yes, Shazam is a great movie. Honestly, a lot of things that from Justice League, like a bunch of the, some of the out of place jokes they added in, seem to be honestly was in the original cut was honestly pretty nice. They removed jokes. They removed uh, some jokes, like that one scene, like that scene with Stu- uh, Wick and Superman. The whole interaction was cut from the start cut, like the jokes of uh talking with Batman, how he was like. Recalling what Batman, what Batman said to the Superman, that was entirely cut. Instead, he just showed Superman purely just raging on Batman with the intent of killing him, run just like having a chat with him, basically. I don't know. Like it was more left up into the air. Like if he's actually aware of what's happening, what's going on, to like with the Snyder Cut, pretty much. Him is basically going all out on Batman with the intent of killing him. 
I don't know. I kind of don't like Zack Snyder's thematical things and like the way he handles movies. I mean, in that movie, actually, the Flash actually had a purpose in that movie. I haven't seen the original, so I can't argue about that. Um, oh well, I haven't seen either cut of the movie, so I can't argue at all. But like, I watched but well, it- I watched Batman v Superman and like, uh, the, the Superman movies with like, what's his name? The new ones, well, like- where he snaps like that super guy's neck. Zod? I don't know his name. Like, they added, like, two more other characters into the Snyder Cut that were cut from the other one, besides the Joker. <laughs> this is Joker. Like, they added in the Deathstroke from at the least scenes that was from a while back that they made into the movie. And another one they added was Martian Manhunter. He came in a few scenes as a teaser for the next movie as well. The green guy. So he was supposed to be a, yeah. He was supposed to play a big part for the movies, so that was cut. Mm. But technically, this, that was like Martian Manhunter's first movie appearance, and it was cut. Is it a darker movie than like Shazam? Well, if he, if he, yes, because in the end they basically lost. <laughs> in the end, until they had to do something about it. I don't know if I will watch it honestly. They lost. Like it's, this is for a little bit. In the ending, they lost badly until like they actually went up and used the ability that Flash mentioned, where he's able to go into time by using the Speed Force, which he used to reverse time and go back to the moment before they end up losing the fight. So he retconned it. No. He just went back in time. Like I said, he was able to do that, but just never wanted to because it's too dangerous. It actually had a really good effect where when he went, goes back goes back in time to the exact spot, everything was built back into place brick by brick. The dirt pretty much being risen from the from basically nothing, making solid ground. And everyone's like bones and blood just basically going back under skeleton. Like piece by piece. That doesn't sound like something I would enjoy watching. It's less graphic than it sounds like, but it's actually pretty interesting, like, this depiction of, like, Flash's, like, ability to go through time. Hmm, I didn't know. Not a big fan and even, of Dark And they stuff. even go over, um, uh, over more Cyborg's, um, backstory and all that, actually giving more development than they did in the, uh, the, uh, the theatrical version, which I actually do enjoy. That's good, I think. I don't... Well, I don't know, honestly. Because they didn't give a lot of time to go into um, Cyborg's backstory and all that. We had it a bit. Hell, we actually saw the accident that caused Cyborg to be turned into Cyborg. We actually got to see that and feel more sympathy for him. Didn't he explode or something? He got in a car crash. Oh, I thought he exploded. Now he got to a car crash that uh, killed his mother. And he was all on a near death before his dad saved him. How did he get so injured then? It was, well, the thing that the car, the truck that hit him was very, was like on the past, was in the driver's seat and ran right close to him. Ah, uh, so he's it like... basically It basically like broke his arms and legs and all that and barely killed him. So he's the, um... Eternal's Creed of uh, DC. You know Eternal's Creed, right? It's from nope. Star Wars. The guy who was in the victories with Dadana before uh, the Civil War. And he got blown up by the Bulwark project. Oh, that guy. Yes. Meh. He is also a cyborg. He has half a uh, face. And another thing that I was just, uh, pay attention to a lot with the, with the movie is there's a lot of slow motion cuts for some reason in the movie. A lot of slow motion is made and used. They are capitalizing on the, the success of uh, X-Men and its 
So motion cuts. Uh, yes. That, That's yeah, literally yeah, what they're that, doing. Bad joke aside. It's not a joke. It, it that is a bad joke because that's not at all. In Sparta, after that X Men movie was released, a lot of movies have done these slow motion cuts. You do realize slow motion has been utilized a lot, i.e., The Matrix, which was famous for using slow motion like that. I haven't seen The Matrix. Shocking. Yes. Like, you assume that the use of slow motion was used back in 20, what, 14? Yes, it was invented in 2014. Like I said, bad jokes aside, your lack of knowledge of movie stuff. They do use a lot of slow motion cuts. The best one was for The Flash, with his first uses of the power during a very crazy car crash that happened right outside when he was getting a job interview. Show him, like, how his actual speed is and how he interacts with things. Yes, but uh, did they play a, a funny pop song? Like, uh, is, Sweet Dreams? Zack Snyder film, of course. Zack Snyder film, of course he didn't. Lame. Should have put Sweet Dreams are made of these, or like, right. Funky Town. It was very interesting, like, when you, when, you, when you first see it, everything goes in slow motion, and when Flash is about to rev up and use his powers, his shoes just basically burst into pieces because he's going so fast his shoes can't handle it. This nonchalantly breaks through a glass uh, door because like without any effort, like he's barely pushed onto it, breaks through it, and just like in his speed, just slowly walks up to the car crash to save who was ever in the wreckage. Like very gently, just gently nudging them out of the way, showing how like his how to him, to how this all looks to him, which is pretty pretty cool, honestly, and a bit cool effect. I see. So was it an enjoyable thing to watch? It was. Would you recommend it? For visual it? effects alone. I say if you're either interested in watching the DC movies or uh, you've already seen the original Justice League and, in theaters, I say might as well watch it. But obviously, since it's DC and there's the dumb stigma of, oh, DC, gross, then I probably might as well not watch it. Because if you're not willing to watch DC movies, you might as well stay away from it. Being the original one, might as well watch it. Hmm, I kind of, what if I don't like dark stuff? Same thought applies, but it's not that much of a dark movie. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a serious movie, but it's not like dark or anything. It's not like the DC anime movies, which get pretty dark. I might consider watching, but uh, not really my thing. As far as I go with DC is the Lego Batman games and the Lego Batman movie. This is one of the more better DC movies, which sucks that they cut it because some disputes with Snyder and Warner Bros. and all that. What? Why did Zack Snyder get cut from the movie? I don't remember. That was like a long time ago. Well, um, I think that's going to be it for uh, today's episode of Stargazer Cafe. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and the bonus uh, stuff for the Snyder Cut. Uh, Sparta says your final thoughts. Good talk. Um, uh, thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Uh... Remember to like, comment, subscribe, check my Twitter, Patreon, Discord link. There's memes on the Discord. Uh, say goodbye, Sparta. Movie. It's good. Yes. Uh, Movie's good. Yes. Good. Say goodbye. Be a, be a good boy. Sparta? Hello. Bye. Good boy. Uh, goodbye, everyone.